Well, let's talk about the mechanism of action of non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. These are my disclosures. Non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors are reversible, non-competitive, allosteric inhibitors of HIV-1 reverse transcriptase. They bind to an induced pocket remote from the active site, which is why we consider them allosteric. They don't directly compete for binding with the nucleoside uh, analogs or with the uh, nucleoside triphosphates. They are generally specific for HIV-1, having little or no activity against HIV-2. They generally have low genetic barrier to resistance, and the pattern of drug resistance may be clade specific. This slide shows the structure of uh, the five currently approved uh, NNRTIs uh, for treatment and one used for prevention, dipivirine. And you can see that by and large, these are uh, heterocyclic uh, complex molecules. This slide shows a ribbon diagram of the reverse transcriptase. Uh, here you see the mutations that confer resistance to uh, thymidine analogs, and here the resistance uh, position for uh, 3TC and FTC. And you can see the uh, RNA template, uh, the uh, growing uh, DNA uh, complement, and the incoming uh, triphosphate, in this case, uh, thymidine triphosphate. Uh, this is where a nucleoside uh, RT inhibitor would bind, but the NNRTIs bind here, at, as I said, at a remote site. By doing so, they alter the conformation of the enzyme in a way that prevents it from uh, carrying out its function of, uh, uh, of creating a double-stranded DNA version of the uh, RNA uh, genomic material of the virus. Here you see a picture of, uh, or a, um, a diagram of nevirapine uh, bound in that pocket you can see these two tyrosine residues at positions 181 and 188 uh, uh, have important stacking interactions uh, with nevirapine as they would with other uh, NNRTIs. And that's why uh, these drugs are less active against HIV-2, uh, in which case these two tyrosines are usually uh, altered uh, to have a different amino acid. There are now uh, quite a large number of mutations that have been described that confer resistance to the various NNRTIs. Uh, some of these are now uh, easily uh, recognizable mutations and some uh, are quite varied. So for example, uh, the key resistance mutation for efavirenz is typically uh, uh, the K103N mutation and the key nevirapine resistance mutation is typically a Y181C, uh, a mutation that also sensitizes the virus to zidovudine and to stavudine, a drug we no longer use, and confers partial resistance to etravirine. The key resistance mutation for real pivirine is found at position 138 and is an E to K change. But there are a host of other mutations, and now there are nearly as many NNRTI resistance mutations as there are protease inhibitor and integrase inhibitor resistance mutations, and it's really important to go to an appropriate source to look up uh, the significance of these mutations because even the experts have trouble uh, keeping these uh, in their minds. Important information about which mutations uh, affect the clinical response to etravirine uh, came from the DUET 1 and 2 trials. By analyzing the uh, proportion of uh, participants whose viruses carried these mutations and what change in virus load or what, how likely they were to achieve virologic suppression, a, a number of mutations were uh, found and assigned relative weights. With, um, uh, you can see uh, here in the table, uh, ranging from uh, one to three. The most common resistance em uh, mutations emerging at the time of etrovirine failure in these trials were changes at positions 179 and 181. A note particularly that uh, a 181I or V mutation uh, gave very high, uh, gave a, a factor of three, and the 181C uh, uh, gave a factor of a two and a half. Now, if we look at how these factors uh, 
contributed to uh, the virologic response, uh, participants whose uh, etrovirine weighted genotype score was two or less had uh, the highest response rates of about 75% achieving uh, full virologic suppression. Those that had scores between two and a half and three and a half had about a 52% response rate, and those with a higher uh, weighted score uh, had only about a 38% uh, response, really not much different than placebo. And what's important here is that, recall that the 181C uh, by itself already gave uh, two and a half uh, uh, factor uh, of resistance, meaning that just that one single mutation, a common nevirapine resistance mutation, would uh, significantly impair the clinical response to etrovirine. Now, in the case of real pivirine, uh, which used to be called uh, TMC278, uh, we see a very different uh, uh, and interesting pattern of resistance. These data come from the phase three trials of real pivirine, the ECHO and Thrive studies, in which real pivirine was compared to efavirenz. You can see that there were uh, roughly uh, similar proportions of uh, participants who developed NNRTI resistance at the time of treatment failure. Those in the real pivirine arm saw the emergence of E138K, and as expected, those in the efavirenz arm had emergence of the K103N. But what was curious is that uh, nearly uh, twice as many uh, people in the real pivirine arm had emergence of nucleoside resistance as compared to the efavirenz arm. And while the most common mutation there was a mutation for 3TC or FTC resistance, in the case of the real pivirine arm, it was the M184I mutation, whereas in the case of the efavirenz arm, it was the more familiar M184V mutation. We were interested in why this particular pattern of M184I occurring together with E138K uh, was observed. And so we constructed a series of site-directed mutants and recombinant viruses in order to be able to do uh, some growth competition experiments uh, in the absence and presence of drug. What we see is that uh, all of the mutations, the 138K and the two uh, mutations for uh, uh, thiocytidine uh, resistance, uh, led to a reduction in replication capacity in the absence of drug, and that replication capacity was, was restored uh, when either the 184I or the 184B mutation uh, was combined with the 138K, suggesting actually mutual uh, benefit, uh, that is the um, uh, impaired replication uh, associated with the 184 mutations was improved just as the uh, 138K mutant was improved by the 184 mutations. But in the presence of drug, um, a more specific story emerges, particularly when 3TC and etrovirine were both uh, added to the tissue culture medium uh, together. You can see that the greatest benefit was uh, to the virus uh, occurred when the 138K mutation was present together with the 184I, significantly more than with 184V, uh, potentially explaining uh, why we see this particular combination of mutations emerging. This was also seen at the level of the reverse transcriptase activity. Uh, here we uh, looked at RT activity in the viral supernatants, and you can see a greater activity when the 138K and I were present together uh, as compared to the 138K with the 184V mutation. Well, let's turn now to talk about the newest uh, NNRTI uh, inhibitor, Doraverine, and some of the resistance uh, properties that we see with uh, this agent. Uh, Doraverine, by and large, is uh, quite effective against viruses that uh, uh, carry mutations that are common uh, to the other uh, NNRTIs, but uh, is um, re resistance to this drug is conferred by mutations at position 227, uh, as well as position uh, 106, uh, and uh, also uh, when those are combined uh, with uh, mutations at uh, uh, 221, you can see uh, very high levels uh, of, uh, of resistance. Also, uh, not just 106I, uh, but uh, 106M. Uh, however, if we look at the more usual NNRTI resistance mutations, 
we can see that deraverine uh, continues to have good activity against viruses that carry the efavirenz resistance mutation at 103, the nevirapine resistance at, uh, at 181, uh, as well as combinations of those mutations uh, as illustrated here and compared to rolpivirine uh, and efavirenz. We can also see that uh, the, uh, that deraverine is effective against viruses that carry the 138 mutation, uh, which, uh, as we discussed previously, is responsible for uh, resistance to rolpivirine. In looking at deraverine-selected NNRTI uh, resistance, uh, there are mutations that confer high-level deraverine resistance, but uh, some of those mutations showed only uh, uh, tenfold or less resistance to uh, etrovirine. Mutations carrying the 227C mutation, which is one of the key resistance mutations for deraverine, also uh, demonstrated increased susceptibility to the nucleoside RT inhibitors. Another example of mutational interaction, as we've seen with the Y181C mutation for nevirapine, and that includes sensitization to tenofovir. Also of note, the replication capacity of deraverine resistance mutations, uh, uh, mutants uh, was generally uh, quite poor, uh, less than a 10 to 20% uh, that of wild type. At the recent Virtual AIDS 2020 conference, Dr. Asante Apaya presented an analysis of deraverine resistance in a collection of more than 4,000 patient samples that had been submitted for resistance testing uh, and, and had resistance to other approved uh, NNRTIs. Uh, and these were samples collected uh, during the period uh, 2018 to 2019. You can see that these uh, samples had a, a nice distribution of the typical uh, NNRTI resistance mutations that we've, uh, with which we've become uh, familiar. And importantly, uh, if we look at the distribution of deraverine uh, susceptibility, you can see that it was really only once there were four or five NNRTI resistance-associated mutations uh, present in the virus that we saw uh, shifts of three or five-fold in the uh, IC50 for deraverine. In addition, uh, the investigators analyzed the response uh, clinically uh, to deraverine in participants in the clinical trials who had uh, presence of the 106i mutation at baseline. Uh, there were relatively few such participants, only eight out of nearly a thousand participants, but seven of those eight were able to achieve virologic suppression. Uh, by comparison, in the Favrin's control arm from one of those trials, uh, there were four such participants, only two of whom achieved virologic suppression. And curiously, uh, in the Darunavir arm, uh, the trial with the Darunavir comparator, uh, where you wouldn't really expect any effect of an NNRTI resistance mutation on uh, protease inhibitor susceptibility, only four out of seven suppressed, suggesting other reasons for virologic failure. Uh, from uh, this analysis, uh, we can conclude that uh, uh, patient samples that have the common NNRTI resistance mutations, including those at positions 103, 106, and 181, remain susceptible to, to deraverine. And although single mutations such as the Y188L can confer resistance to deraverine, in general, at least four mutations are required to reduce deraverine susceptibility. And of course, uh, as just discussed, the presence of the 106I mutation by itself uh, seems not to have any significant effect on uh, clinical response to deraverine. So in conclusion, the non-nucleoside RT inhibitors have a unique mechanism of action as compared to the nucleoside RT inhibitors. A wide range of mutations confer resistance to these uh, drugs. Resistance patterns may vary by clade, and newer NNRTIs may have activity against viruses resistant to first-generation and second-generation NNRTIs.